Hey, welcome back. In this video, I just want to go over an example using the conservation of energy equation. It's also referred to as a conservation of mechanical energy equation, if you've heard it that way before. So it's just simply T1 plus V1, that is kinetic energy and potential energy, plus the sum of work done from state 1 to 2 is going to be equal to T2 plus V2. So all this is saying is we just have our energy at state 1, plus or minus the work done on the object, is going to equal the energy at state two. Um, this work term right here is referring to non-conservative forces, which in our case is basically always going to be friction. Um, so if there's no friction present in the problem, that will drop off, and this expression can simply just be written as T1 plus V1 is equal to T2 plus V2. So let's set up an example here that's not going to involve friction. Let's say we have a guy snowboarding down an icy slope. So let's give some values here. Let's say his initial velocity is going to be uh, 3 meters per second. He's at a height here. He's going down a slope that's 10 meters. We can give him a mass, but you'll see that it's going to drop out in a second. But uh, yeah, let's say that this person is 75 kilograms. And that the surface that he's going on has no friction. Now that's clearly a simplification, but you're often going to see problems with that simplification at this level. And then we're going to ask for his final velocity Vf when he reaches the sum point that is 10 meters vertically below where he started. We're also not actually going to need the path length because we're only dealing with the conservative forces of his weight, but if you wanted to we can add in one that we won't need in this video, but we could just say that the path length that he travels, what I mean by that is literally the length of the blue line, um, let's call that 50 meters because in the next video I'm going to go over this example with friction, so at least we'll have all these values here for the next video in the series. Okay, so we can just go in and fill out the expression. Kinetic energy at point one is just going to be one half mv1 squared. That's a lowercase v for velocity. And then for gravitational potential energy, it's just mgh, mass times gravity times the height. And the height difference in this case is going to be 10 meters because we're going to be setting this point at the bottom, the height two, we're going to be setting that as a zero reference. Anyways, uh, carrying on, we can write our expression for kinetic energy two, so that's going to be one half mv2 squared plus mgh2. All right, so right away we can see that all of the masses are going to drop out. We can divide both sides by m and they're going to be gone. And because h2 is 0 and h1 is 10, this whole term, well that variable is 0 and basically the whole term is going to go to 0, so it's all going to drop off. So we can fill in the values that we do have left over, so we have 1 half v1 squared, that is 3 meters per second, all squared, plus acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, times height. So height in this case is what we're looking at here. It is 10 meters. It is 10 meters above the reference zero that we're taking. So that's times 10 meters. And then on the right hand side we just had left over for what we had for kinetic energy 2. So we just have 1 half times v2 squared. v2 is the unknown that we're looking for. All right so we can simplify these a little bit. We're going to get 4.5 meters squared per second squared plus 98.1 meters squared per second squared is equal to 1 half v2 squared. So the left hand side simplifies to 102.6 meters squared per second squared, which is equal to 1 half v2 squared. So we can just multiply both sides by 2 and we'll have 205.2 meters squared per second squared. And then we're going to take the square root of both sides. So we can simply just write that, and that will give us V2, which is just 14.3 meters per second. So we can put a little box around that as our answer, and that's really all you need to do. I um, just wanted to show you that these problems are very simple, um, especially when there's no friction involved. Um, but join me in the next video, and we'll go over the same example, but we'll introduce an aspect of friction to this problem, and we'll just see how that changes it.